Thank you for joining us for this workshop. My name is Danielle Moore and I'm the Parent and Family Support Specialist here at the Urban League of Greater Madison. This workshop topic is Parents Guide to Virtual Learning Platforms. Throughout this workshop, we are going to be exploring the different virtual platforms that are used in the districts in um, Madison and then the surrounding areas. There are multiple platforms that are being used. So in um, MMSD, they are using Ready Rosie, Seesaw, and Google Classroom. In the Middleton Cross Plains Area School District, they are using Seesaw and Buzz. In the Sun Prairie Area School District, they're using Seesaw and Google Classroom, as well as in the Oregon School District. The Verona and Monona Grove School Districts are using Seesaw and Canvas. And then the McFarland School District is using Canvas. We'll be exploring both the parent and family um, member uh, tools that can be utilized for these platforms and then also a general overview of what your scholars will see when they log into the platforms for their own use. We'll start by going through Infinite Campus Parent Portal, which is util utilized in all of the school districts um, to help track attendance and grades. Infinite Campus has both a mobile, mobile web and web browser access. So in order to utilize Infinite Campus on your cell phone or iPad, you need to download the Infinite Campus Parent Portal app. Um, there is an app separate for students, so you want to make sure that when you're downloading this app, it has the little um, P icon for the constellation, and then you'll know that you'll be able to um, enter in your account. Um, in order to log in, you're going to have to enter the city that you're in, select Wisconsin, and hit search and find whichever school district you're in and click on it. It'll then bring you into the login um, page. So you'll just need to enter your Infinite Campus username and password. Similar process with the web browser. You'll need to go to your district's website in order to find the correct link um, to the login because it's different at each district. Um, the district website will have the Infinite Campus icon or it'll say Infinite Campus and have a link to it. Um, you'll just click on that and select that you're a campus parent and enter in your username and password. If you are having trouble accessing um, your login information or you need to reset your password, um, each individual district has different um, steps um, and at each login point it'll have the option to click forgot my password um, and then it'll direct you to get that information. Once you're in Infinite Campus, you'll want to utilize these four different tools um, so you can see your scholars grades, their attendance, their schedule, and then assignments for their courses. From the dashboard, you'll want to click on grades. If you want to look at your scholars grades, in the upper right hand corner, you'll see which scholar you're looking at if you have multiple scholars. Um, and you can toggle between them just by clicking on their name and then drop, it'll have a drop down menu and you can switch back and forth between your scholars. Once you click on the grades, you'll see these two different views. So there's the web browser view and then also the web app. It'll be broken down by each course that your scholar is in and then um, whether it's a progress report, a like quarter grade or a semester grade. Um, it'll give that overall percentage and letter assignment. And then if you want more details about the grades per assignment in that course, you just need to click the little arrows and it'll give you um, a more detailed look at their grades. Going back to the dashboard, you can click on attendance and it'll take you to your scholar's attendance. Um, so this is important. You want to make sure that your scholar is being um, counted appropriately for their attendance, especially since everything is virtual, um, making sure that they're being counted um, for doing all the work that they're doing. Um, you'll see that it's broken down by each course um, and you can click in on more details about the dates um, per absences or tardies um, just to get more detail. Again, if you go back to the dashboard, you can then click on your scholar's schedule 
and you'll see um, what courses they're assigned in and then the teachers that are teaching them in that course. If you want to see a breakdown of each course and the assignments that are being put in for grades um, and things like that when they're due, um, you can go back to the dashboard and click assignments and then it'll have information on all of their assignments and when they're due, if they're missing work, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, the next mobile, um, the next platform is Ready Rosie, which also has mobile app and web browser access, and this is being used in MMSD at the 4K level. Um, and this learning platform is one that um, just the parent or family member will have access to, um, so it's all, um, your scholar won't have a separate account for this platform. If you want to access Ready Rosie on your mobile app or in your web browser, um, you, sorry, if you need to access it on your phone or an iPad, um, you need to download the app, um, and this will be the icon that you'll see associated with that app, so you'll need to download it. If you have not already created an account and you need one, um, click Create Account. You should have received an invitation code from your scholar's teacher. You'll need that, um, code in order to create an account. So if you have not received that invitation code, um, reach out to your scholar's teacher and they can um, either assign you a new one or um, resend that code to you so you can create your account. And once you get that code, you'll just um, enter any of your information that it requires and then um, create that account. If you already have an account and you want to sign in, just click sign in and then enter your login information. From the web browser, you're gonna go to app.readyrosie.com to log into your account. And again, if you need an account, you need um, that invitation code. So um, you should have received an email with that. Um, so check that and create an account through the web browser if needed. And then if you already have an account, you'll enter your login information and sign in. In this video will go over what you have access as a parent or family member in Ready Rosie. I want to show you what a parent has access to upon being registered for Ready Rosies. I want to show you what a parent has access to upon being registered for Ready Rosies. So the first thing they have is access to the entire Ready Rosie video library, library accessible and searchable from any device. So this is the same search functions that a teacher has or a district administrator has uh, where they're able to go through and search and find the videos that make the most sense to them. Um, and when they look at a video, uh, they're able to look at it in English or Spanish. Um, this will be set uh, according to the preference that they set upon being registered, whether it's English first or Spanish, but they're able to access both. Uh, they're able to interact with this video. Obviously, they can watch it. Uh, they can interact with it and, and like it or dislike it. Uh, they can favorite it. Uh, they can click on we did it to report back that they actually did the activity, not just watch the video. Uh, they're also able to find more information uh, about this particular activity, how to make it easier for a child who's having difficulty or, or how to make it a, a bit more challenging for a child who uh, perhaps this was too easy for them. Um, then they can also give feedback to their teacher. So they can write a comment uh, or send a message back to their teacher uh, and that will be sent um, and the teacher can see that and can actually go back and forth with them uh, if they want. So there's really two-way communication in here. So they have access to the entire video library. They also have access to uh, their own data dashboard where they can track how many videos have they watched, um, how many videos have they liked, which ones have they favorited, um, and so it really just helps them track their own progress. They can see their favorites um, so that they can go back if there's particular ones that they and their family like doing and they want to watch them again and go back and do those uh, videos. Um, but what they also will get is weekly playlists that are going to be pushed out to them uh, from the Ready Rosie team. Uh, so they're able to go through and see those uh, again after they're sent out. Those are going to be pushed out to them via email or text message according to the preference that they set upon registration, but also are able to get uh, playlists that are pushed out to them uh, by the teacher uh, that they are connected with. So uh, that's a pretty great feature for them to be able to see. Uh, and then, of course, they're able to go in at any point 
uh, and change their preferences. So they can go through here, click on their profile, uh, and they can change their email or their mobile phone number that's connected with them. They're able to tell us how they want to receive Ready Rosie by email or text or change any of that. They can change their primary language. They can change their password right here uh, if they want to do that in the system. And you see data according to uh, how they've been utilizing this. So again, it's pretty robust. Um, for the uh, caregivers and the parents who are signed up for it, a lot of access right from the beginning. A lot of people mistake it thinking that the only thing the parents are going to get are these messages put out throughout the week. This shows that they have the opportunity and we want to encourage them to explore the video library um, as much as they want to do that. So the more interaction, the better, where they can find uh, activities that they think are going to be helpful for their family. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, let us know at support at readyrosie.com. Okay. The next mobile or next app that we're going to be talking about is Seesaw. Um, so this is another one that has both that mobile app um, and then also the web browser access. And this learning platform is being used in Madison, Middleton, Cross Plains, Sun Prairie, Monona Grove, Oregon, and Verona. So if you wanna access Seesaw as a parent or family member um, from your phone or um, iPad or tablet, um, you'll need to download the Seesaw Family app. So there is also a separate app for students. Um, so you want to make sure that you get the family app and it'll have family right in the icon for you so that you know you've got the right one. Um, if you need a family account, you're going to click create and then you need your scholars QR code so that it associates your account with theirs. Um, you can access that through uh, your scholars account or um, get that information from your scholars teacher. Um, once you scan the QR code for your scholar, you're going to follow the prompts and then create your account. If you already have a family account um, and you need to add your scholar's account to it, um, you just sign in. You'll click on your profile icon, add new child, and then scan their QR code and then it'll associate the two accounts. Um, if you received an invitation to join your scholar's um, account through a family uh, account, You'll click the link that you received in a text or email um, and then create your account or sign in and it'll automatically associate um, your account with theirs without that QR code. To access it from the web browser, you'll need to go to app.seesaw.me. Um, if you don't have a family account yet, again, you'll just need to, you'll click on I'm a family member and then create an account um, and scan that QR code or enter um, the code that it asks for. And if you already have a family account, you'll just click I'm a family member and sign in. Um, and if you need to add your scholar, you'll again click on the profile icon and add the new child and scan that QR code or enter it in. And then again, if you received an invitation by email or text and you go through the web browser, click on that link um, and then either create your account or sign in. And this video will show you what the family app looks like for Seesaw. Hi, I'm Angela. Welcome to Seesaw. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the Seesaw family app. Seesaw makes viewing and connecting with your children's learning easy. Let's get started. When you launch the family app, you sign in and you will see the home tab. From home view, you can see recent posts from all of your children in one place. The home tab will show you work from the last 60 days. Teachers can also turn on options so you can like and comment on your child's work. Tap the heart icon to like. Tap the comment icon to leave a text or voice comment. Looking at the bottom of the screen, you'll also notice the Journals tab. Once you tap Journals, you can select any of your children's portfolios to explore more deeply. First, tap your child's name, then select the class you want to explore. Just scroll to see content. 
You'll notice at the top, tap on calendar view to see items from specific dates without having to scroll endlessly. If you prefer the feed view, simply tap the feed view. Another great feature in the Family app is the ability to filter work by folders. Students and teachers can add work to folders to keep their CSAP portfolio organized. If you tap on the filtering tool at the top, you can filter to a specific folder such as writing. Now I'll only see my child's writing work. If you want to explore a different class or year, go to the upper left and tap the back arrow. Now let's peek at the Inbox tab. On the bottom right, tap Inbox. Tap on Messages to see a list of messages. To read a message, just tap on it to open. You can also send a private message to the teacher. The message you send in the Inbox tabs are only visible to the teacher. If a teacher responds to your message, you will see a red circle appear in Inbox. Simply tap the message to view. If you tap on the Notifications tab, you will see a list of the most recent activity in your children's journals. Now, let's review. Tap Home to see recent posts from all of your children in one place. Tap Journals to browse full portfolios from all of your children's classes and sort by folders. Tap Inbox to view messages and notifications from the teacher. We hope you enjoy the new Seesaw Family app. Thank you for supporting your child and their learning. So this is a little um, guide to the different icons that you'll see um, in the Family app and what um, you can utilize them for. And then your scholar will also have their own individual access to Seesaw. Um, they can either access it, again, through a mobile app, um, like a phone or a tablet, or they can use the web browser. Um, if you do want them to have a mobile access, you'll need to download the Seesaw Class app, um, and it'll have class on the icon, so you'll know that that's the right one for them. Um, or they can go to app.seesaw.me, the same way as um, you did, to log in, and they'll just click, I'm a student. Um, they can always sign in using their QR code. Um, so you can click scan code and then um, I would suggest either printing off the QR code if you have printer access or saving a picture of it somewhere so then it will scan um, and that's a quick uh, easy way to sign in. Otherwise they can log in um, in other ways. They'll select their name just to confirm it's them and then they will be signed into their journal. This video will go over what um, your student will be um, seeing in Seesaw and how they will utilize it for their learning. Hi, have you met Rainbow Bear? Rainbow Bear just started using Seesaw, like you. Rainbow Bear would love to help me show you how it works. Are you ready? Yay! Seesaw is where you can use fun learning tools to create amazing things, like videos and drawings. You can use your learning tools to complete assignments like these, and everything you create gets saved to your Seesaw journal so you can show off how much you learn and grow. Let's see how it works. First, we need to open Seesaw. Click on the Seesaw Class app. It looks like this. Or type app.seesaw.me in a web browser. Click I'm a student. It's sign-in time. Different classrooms sign in in different ways. We'll show you the three different ways to sign in. Your teacher will tell you which way you should do it. The first way is to sign in with a code. Yeah, kind of like a secret code. Your teacher might give you a QR code like this. You'll click scan code. Hold your code up to your computer's camera. Hold it still. Your teacher may also give you a text code. You can type in the text code here. No mistakes, then click go. The second way you might sign in is with an email address and password. Your teacher may have given you a join code. You only need to use this code the first time you sign in. Enter the code here and click go. 
If you have a Google email address, click here to sign in with your Google account. If you don't, type in your information to create an account. Check for mistakes. Remember, you only need to use your join code the first time you sign in. Next time, you'll just sign in with your email and password. If your teacher doesn't give you a join code, that's all right. Not all classes need them. Just click sign in with Google or type in your email address and password. Check for mistakes. The third way you might sign in is with your Clever Badge. If you don't have a Clever Badge, that's okay. Some students do. They click See Software Schools Clever Sign In and scan their badge. Cool. How do you know which way to sign in? Your teacher will tell you. Remember, always listen to your teacher. We're in. This is Seesaw. When you click on the Journal tab right here, you get to see everything you've made on Seesaw. Making things in Seesaw is so much fun. You'll want to Seesaw every day. One way to add to your Seesaw journal is to click the green Add button. It looks like this. You can find it up here. Click it. Look at all these learning tools. Let's start with drawing. You'll use this a lot. You can use all these learning tools to show your thinking and learning, like fun pens and cool text labels and amazing shapes, plus so much more. When you're done, just click the green check. Your teacher will approve your work and it'll show up in your journal. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And there's one more thing we want to show you. Activities. When your teacher assigns you activities in Seesaw, they show up in the Activities tab, right here. You'll see all the activities you need to complete in the To-Do section. Find an activity to complete and click the green Add Response button. It looks like this. You get to use all of Seesaw's learning tools. There's so much you can do on Seesaw. Are you ready to try it? Let's Seesaw! So the main thing that your scholar will be doing in Seesaw is responding to the different activities um, that your scholar's teacher assigns. So those are all the assignments that they'll need to complete. Um, in order to respond to one, they'll need to click on the activities tab and find whichever activity they're looking to complete and click add response. You'll want to look over the instructions so that your scholar knows exactly what they need to do to complete the activity. Um, and then they will do whatever the instructions say, and then make sure that they're double checking their post and um, so that it has everything that they need. And once it's all ready to go, you'll click the green check to add it to their journal. Okay, the next um, learning platform is Buzz, and this is being used in Middleton Cross Plains. Um, so this one only has a web browser access, um, and as a parent or family member, you'll have an observer view. Um, so it'll look a little different than what your scholar is seeing, but you'll have um, some overview tools to see how your scholar is doing and checking on their pro progress. So in order to um, log into Buzz, you'll need to go to the Middleton Cross Plains Area School District website. You'll select on their 2020-2021 plan, click on the Genius Buzz login. You'll enter your login information and then click Login. If you don't have information about um, logging in, you'll just um, click need information or forgot password. Once you're signed in, um, you'll be taken to the dashboard, which will have an overview of all your scholars, different courses, and how far in that course they've completed. If you want some more details um, about their grades, you can click on the gradebook tab, and it'll give the overall grade, the number of assignments they've completed, um, the teacher, um, for each of the courses that your scholar is enrolled in. And then if you want more details about um, what makes up that grade, you'll want to click details next to that course, and it'll bring you into the assignment breakdown. So in the um, assignments, it'll have the, the grade, the due date for that assignment, when it was completed, and then a feedback um, column. So the grade part is updated in real time. So as soon as the teacher enters that information, it is updated on the Buzz platform. But the feedback part is updated every 24 hours. Um, so that'll provide you with some more detail about why your scholar received that grade or um, comments on the assignment and things like that. So that'll only be updated once a day. If you go back to your dashboard, um, you can click on the contacts 
tab, and that will give you all of the contact information for your scholars' teachers if you um, need to email them or give them a phone call and get connected with them. You'll find all of their information there. And then if you go um, from there and click on the teacher, it'll give you some more um, information about when their office hours are if you click the little eye icon. Um, so then you know when they um, have those office hours and those would be good times to connect with them. So your scholar will also access um, Buzz through a web browser and they'll follow the same exact um, directions as you to log in, except they have one extra step. So as soon as they um, go through the district website, that 2020-21 plan, Genius Buzz login, they'll log in with their information. They'll need to click Go to LMS and that will bring them into their course dashboard. In this video, we'll go over what that looks like and how um, your scholar can navigate their platform. The main menu is a great place to navigate quickly to courses or to important areas of your dashboard. To access the main menu, click on the three lines in the upper left-hand corner. From here, you'll have Home, which is your home dashboard that we just viewed, your grades, communication, calendar, and any courses that you are enrolled in will be behind that line and also your help. Let's look at each of these. Again, home is your home dashboard that you see when you first log in. Grades is your performance area. If you're enrolled in multiple courses, you will have to click the course that you want to see those grades specifically. Otherwise, you're going to have an overview like this. I can click on any course and get my grades that are specific for the course I clicked on. Let's go back up to the main menu and click on home. From here, we also have access to communication, which is communication from your teacher, usually announcements, or other things that they might post to you. The last one is calendar, and this is where all of your activities will display in order that they are due. I can view these by all, month, week, or day, and you can see if there is any day that has an activity, it will have a dot below the number. So on the 8th, I have one activity. Again, I can do this by week, by month, and you can see that all of the activities for this month will show here. All right, also, once we're in a specific course, you then can choose to view the activities for that course or the grades for that specific course as well. I can go back to the main menu as you saw before or go into the course as I just showed you. Once I'm in the course, I can view the grades, communication, or calendar just for that specific course as well. So again, the main menu is a great way to navigate quickly between different areas of your dashboard. The next learning platform is Google Classroom. Um, that's being used in Madison, uh, Sun Prairie, and Oregon. So through Google Classroom, as a parent or family member, you'll um, be able to sign up to receive email summaries for each of your scholars and their courses. You'll need to receive an email invitation from your scholar's teacher in order to sign up for them. Um, if you have not received that email yet, just reach out to your scholar's teacher um, and they can make sure that you are associated with your scholar's account and invited um, as a like viewer of their email summary. So once you get that email invitation, you'll just follow the link and log into a Google account. If you don't have a Google account, um, it's free to create and you do not need to set up a new email through Google. So you'll just um, click create a Google account, enter in your information, and then your pre-existing email if you don't want to um, make a new Gmail for just these email summaries. Once you're signed into that Google account, you'll set up um, the email notifications that settings that you want. So you can either choose a daily summary email or a weekly summary email. And then this video will go over what those um, email summaries will include.
What's up world, I'm Mr. Vaca and today we're gonna take a look at Google Classroom email summaries for parents and guardians. Now, if your child's school district is using a G Suite Google Apps for Education account, then they have the ability to send their parents or guardians an email summary of what's going on in their Google Classroom. You'll be able to change the frequency of the notifications for your Google Classroom. And here on the help page, it also lets you know that those daily emails will only go out Monday through Friday. They will not happen on Saturday or Sunday. At any point, you can also remove yourself from the classroom notifications or unsubscribe from the email chains. In that email, you will see missing work, work that's late at the time that the email was sent, upcoming work, which means work that's due either today and tomorrow for daily emails or work that's due in the upcoming week for the weekly emails. You'll also get class activities such as announcements, assignments, and questions recently posted by teachers. Now let's take a look of our student exam named Felix and we have here a weekly summary for Felix it says student work missing from last week my top five influential figures in American history that's the name of the assignment in the course US history it also tells you right here that it was due on July 26 and this was the weekly summary from August 1st to August 5th so it lets you know not only when the email was sent but what was due when if it's late or not it also says here this assignment, what is the Harlem Renaissance, who started it? That was due the next day on the 27th in a different class, English and American Literature. Then upcoming work, due next week, you have U.S. History's class and Marine Biology. This class has a project that's due. Then you have class activity. So this right here is the U.S. History class activity, an assignment, a question that was posted on the class feed, and another assignment, but that's not due again until August 16th. Then this is a different class, American Literature, an assignment assignment, a question, and then another class announcement. And then for the marine biology class, you have an assignment and an announcement. So that's pretty much what you're going to see, whether it's either you sign up for the daily or the weekly, and you do that all through the notifications. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave it down in the comments box below. And feel free to share out this video, this channel, to all of your colleagues, your friends. Hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up. It helps out the channel a ton. Thanks again for everything. Don't forget to wash your hands, work hard, Play hard, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, so it's nice that um, you'll just receive one email with all of your scholars' courses um, all right there, um, rather than getting an email for each course, so it'll be nicely compiled into a good summary. So your scholar will have a different view of Google Classroom and they will be able to access, access this through a web browser. So they'll need to go to google.com and sign into their account. In order to get to Google Classroom, they'll then click the little waffle icon in the um, top right hand corner, it's those nine dots. Um, they'll click on this Google Classroom icon um, and then click on whichever class that they are looking for. From there, they'll see um, this kind of homepage for their course. Um, so at number one here, those three little dots will be the menu of all the classes that they're um, signed up for. And then right next to that, you'll see the class that they are in currently, the name of it at number two. Number three um, highlights the stream tab. So this is um, where your scholars teachers will put up announcements, um, any like questions or updates, um, things like that, and they'll see that below. Um, this is also where some teachers have set up um, the ability for your scholar to comment and interact with their peers um, in this type of format. At number four, um, this will be an important one to pay attention to. Um, this is where your scholar's classwork will be. So all of their assignments are held in this classwork tab. Um, so if they're looking to complete an assignment, they'll want to go there. And number five, um, the people tab has all the contact information for the teacher or teachers and then all of your scholars classmates in there. Number six, that's that little waffle icon. Um, so this will be all the different Google apps that your scholar has access to and can utilize for um, doing their assignments. Number seven is your scholar's Google account. So if they need to change any of their settings, um, they'll go there to do that. 
Number eight is another important one to pay attention to. It's the upcoming assignments tab. So if your scholar has something due um, in the more immediate future, um, it'll show up there. And then they'll be able to help them manage um, what they need to prioritize when doing their work. At number nine down here, you'll see that's where they'll see that stream, kind of those live updates. Um, and then again, if they want to comment with their classmates um, and the teacher has that set up, that's where they would do that. Once you go in the classwork, this is a little more of those assignment details. So when you want to complete an assignment, you'll click on that classwork up at number one here. And number two is where your scholar can view their grades. Number three, each class generates its own Google Class um, calendar where all of their due dates will be held. Um, so if they like that calendar view, um, they can click on that and then see kind of the longer term of when their due dates are. And number four, each class also has its own class drive that ho hosts all the files um, that your scholar might need access to in order to complete their assignments. So if they need to see a file to go along with it, they can click there to find it. Going over to number five here. Um, so this is kind of the organization that your scholar's teacher will be using and all the different topics. So I've seen um, teachers organize it by units, by weeks. Um, so that will vary based on what your scholar's teacher is using. Um, so they'll want to make sure that they um, know how their teacher's organizing it um, in order to be able to quickly access um, the different assignments that they want to see. So at number six here, that's what the topic will look like um, in the kind of stream of it. So under that benchmark test, you'll see that there's an assignment here, and that will be that test that they need to do. And then under this daily lesson files, so that would be the topic. At number seven here, this is an assignment um, that your scholar would need to complete. And so it has the title of that assignment. And then if you go over to the right hand side, it'll have the due date that it's due. Um, so this one is due today. If it's due later on, it'll tell you that date. And right below it, it has that green assigned. So that's the assignment status. Um, some teachers are just entering in all of the assignments and some of them are not assigned yet. So if it's not assigned, it'll have that there. Um, and that's something that your scholar doesn't need to focus on um, just yet, um, but it's a good thing to look forward to. Um, within this assignment, it has um, the different files that your scholar would need to access. Um, these are all PDFs, so they would open it and then complete their work in that. Some um, teachers attach Google Docs or Google Slides to it, and that's where your scholar, scholar would work. And then at number 11, view assignment, they would open up that and that's how they would go in to submit their assignment to their teacher once they've completed it. All right. And then here's some Google icons that you should know um, and that your scholar will be utilizing most likely throughout this virtual learning. Um, so the Google Classroom um, icon is that little chalkboard. Google Calendar, they can utilize lists for all the different due dates that they have or helping them figure out their schedules with Zoom calls. Um, the Chrome, so that's a web browser that um, is easily accessible with all the different Google apps. It's owned by Google. Um, Google Sheets is a spreadsheet um, that some of your scholars might be utilizing for different assignments. Um, Google Keep is kind of like a list making, brainstorming notebook type of um, app that Google has. So if your scholar likes to make lists, um, to-do lists and things like that, or they just like to have a like brainstorm journal, um, that could be something that they would like to utilize. Um, Gmail is the email address um, and account that would be associated with their Google account. Um, so they'll need that to help with their communications with their teachers. Google Forms, um, some teachers utilize lists for um, quizzes and tests and things like that, or they also utilize it to get feedback and do surveying um, with scholars. So they might use that. Google Drive is where all of your scholars' um, files that are created um, with Google Apps are stored. So if they need to go back into and find a file for an assignment, um, they would want to go to their drive. Google Docs is a word processing app. Um, through Google, um, so they'll use it for any writing um, and other assignments that they might have. And then Google Sides is like a presentation app 
Um, and some teachers utilize this where each scholar in the class has their own slide that they work on um, and they use it collaboratively that way. Okay. The next learning platform is Canvas. Um, and this is being used in Monona Grove, Verona, and McFarland. So as a parent or family member, you'll have an observer view um, in Canvas. So it'll be different um, than what your scholar sees. Um, and again, with this platform, you have a mobile app access or also web browser access. So if you want to um, look at it on your phone or tablet or iPad, um, you just need to download the Canvas parent app, um, which is different than the app that your scholar might use. Um, you'll know the difference because the parent app has the blue icon on it. So you want to make sure that you have that for you. Um, then you'll click find school and then um, find whichever school that you are using. Um, this with. And if you don't have an account, um, you'll need to select need a Canvas account um, and then sign up. Um, in order to associate your account with your scholar, you'll need their pairing code, which they need to access from their account. Um, they'll go to their settings and then click uh, pair with an observer and it'll generate a code. You'll need to enter that in to create your account. And then if you already have an account um, or you need to add some additional scholars, into your account. Um, you'll sign in with your information. You'll tap menu, um, manage students, and then that little plus icon. And then you'll enter that pairing code um, into there. From the web browser, each school district um, has its own um, URL to it. So make, sh make sure that you enter the right one for your school district. Um, <clears throat> and then if you need an account, you'll click parent of a Canvas user. Um, and then enter that information. And again, you'll need that student pairing code to create your account. If you already have an account or need um, to add those additional scholars um, on the web browser, it's a little different than the app. You'll need to sign in. You'll click on your account. You'll go to settings, then click observing. Then you'll need to select add student and then enter that student pairing code into that box. And then that will um, associate you with all of your scholars and you'll be able to um, view different parts of their um, learning. And this is, we'll go over what that looks like um, for you as an observer. Meet Amy Pandison. Amy has two kids, Tucker and Jane. Tucker is in the 8th grade and loves world history. Jane is in the 3rd grade and enjoys science projects. Their school uses Canvas to facilitate student learning. Amy wants to be involved in her kids' education, not to do it for them, but to help them be successful and build confidence as learners. Amy wants to check their grades, view assignment due dates and the instructions, follow Amy and Tucker's calendars, and communicate easily with teachers. Amy hears about the Canvas Parent app in an email from the school. Both kids' teachers use Canvas and want to make sure parents can easily stay connected. Amy searches for Canvas Parent in the App Store for her mobile device. After it downloads, Amy searches for her school district in the search bar. When she finds it, she then sees the option to sign in. Amy does not have her own Canvas account yet, so she selects Parents of a Canvas User, Create Account. She enters her name, her email address, and creates a password, but does not have a student pairing code. Tucker creates a pairing code from his account by opening his account settings from the global navigation bar. He selects Pair with Observer and gives that code to Amy. She can now see Tucker's classes and grades on the app's home screen. Jane is still in elementary school, so Amy gets her pairing code from Jane's teacher and easily adds it on the app. Now Jane is all set up with the Canvas Parent app as her sidekick in supporting her kids' education. To make sure she stays up to date on both kids' accounts, Jane sets up her alerts and notifications. On her phone or tablet, Amy selects Manage Students and then selects Tucker. She sets her preferences on when and about what she would like Canvas to alert her. She does the same for Jane. As Amy finishes choosing her notification settings, 
Jane comes bounding into the house without the coat she was wearing when she left for school. On the app, Amy opens her inbox, selects Jane's class, and sends a quick message to Jane's teacher about the missing coat. That night, before sitting down to dinner, Amy checks Tucker's classes and grades. He's doing pretty well. She also checks the calendar and notices that Tucker has a test coming up in a few days, and then helps Tucker organize his notes and create a study plan after dinner. She notices in her alert section an announcement about a field trip to the local museum for Tucker's world history class, and a request for volunteer parent chaperones. Amy sends a quick message through the Canvas inbox to volunteer as a chaperone. Amy glances at the calendar and notices that Jane has a science project coming up. She looks at the assignment and notices a list of supplies and instructions for how to submit the assignment. Amy sets a reminder to buy the supplies. That night, Jane sits at the computer with Amy and they make a plan for Jane's project. Later that week, Amy helps Jane finish the project and helps her submit before the due date. After a long week of extracurricular activities, Amy sees a notification on her Canvas parent app about a missing assignment in one of Tucker's classes. She reads the instructions posted on Canvas and asks Tucker how she can help him complete the assignment. That night, Amy sits with Tucker and helps him upload a picture to submit his assignment. Even though the assignment is still flagged as late and Tucker lost some points, it's still turned in for grading. Like Amy Pandison, you can also support your students' learning and know what's going on in their academic lives. You can download it for free in your App Store. You can also log on to Canvas as an observer through your web browser. Also, check out the Canvas guides for observers in the Canvas community. Scholar will have um, their own access to um, their account and they can do that again through a mobile app or a web browser. Um, so if you want them to have that mobile app access, um, they'll need to download the Canvas student app, which will have the red icon for it. Um, they'll click find school and enter whichever school they're going to, and then they will sign in with their information. Um, from the web browser, they'll go to the same um, URL that you did as a parent or family member. Um, if they forgot their password or need to create um, their own account, they'll click uh, forget password um, and then enter their school's email address and then it'll send them a new password to set up um, for their account. And then if they already know their um, login information, they'll just enter that in and then log in. When they log in, um, they'll go to their own dashboard and this video will go over what they will be able to do in Canvas. In this video, you will learn about your Canvas dashboard and global navigation links. You'll also learn about navigating a course and accessing assignments. When you log into Canvas, the first thing you see is the dashboard. It provides a high-level overview of your current courses. You may be able to select from three different viewing options. Card View displays a course card for each of your favorite courses. Each card can include clickable icons for assignments, announcements, discussions, and files. List View displays all course to-do items in an agenda view to help you easily manage tasks across all of your courses. List view opens to the current date. You can scroll up and down on the page to view past or future items. The last dashboard view is Recent Activity, which displays a stream of recent notifications from all your courses, including announcements, conversations, assignments, discussions, and peer reviews. Canvas displays a global navigation menu that gives you direct access to your courses and other areas of Canvas. From the account link, you can modify your user settings, specify your notification preferences, upload personal files, manage ePortfolios, and log out of Canvas. 
Click the Dashboard link to return to the Canvas dashboard at any time. Click the Courses link to quickly access your favorite courses and to view a list of all your courses. Click the Groups link to access any current groups in which you are enrolled or to view a list of all your groups. Click the Calendar link to view your personal calendar and course calendars. Click the Inbox link to view and send conversations to your instructors and peers within Canvas. And finally, click the Help link to access help resources for your institution. Now let's take a look at the course interface. Click the Courses link and then click the name of the course you want to visit. Canvas automatically opens courses to the course home page set by your instructor. The course interface consists of four main components. Course content displays in the content area. You can use the course navigation links, breadcrumb navigation, or the sidebar to navigate to different areas of the course. The course homepage sidebar includes a to-do list displaying items that you need to do in your course. You can click any assignment name to view the assignment. And to submit the assignment, click the Submit Assignment button. Return to the course homepage by clicking the Home link in Course Navigation or the course name in Breadcrumb Navigation. If your course includes student groups, you can view a list of your groups in Course Groups. Click the group name to view the group homepage. You can view recent assignment feedback in Recent Feedback. Click the assignment name and view feedback in the Submission Details page. You may be able to view your course grades by clicking the Grades link in Course Navigation. You can also access the Course Grades page from the Course Card and Recent Activity Dashboard. Click the View Grades button and click the course name. The Grades page displays your current course grade and a clickable list of all the course's graded assignments and assignment details. You've now completed this Canvas overview video for students. For additional information on this or any other topic about Canvas, please visit guides.canvaslms.com. You can also ask questions and engage with other Canvas users by visiting community.canvaslms.com. So if you need any additional support beyond this workshop, um, make sure to check out um, your district websites or your school specific websites and they have resources um, to help you with the different learning platforms and videos. Um, and if you are struggling with finding information on that, reach out to your schools like library media tech specialist. Um, there and they can also help direct you um, and also asking your scholars different teachers if you have class specific questions um, within the platforms and they can help you as well. Um, if you need um, any kind of drop-in real-time support I'm offering office hours each day of the week at various times um, so feel free to log into that and you can get that from our um, virtual learning resource library there's a link there um, and then if you have any other questions or need um, support beyond those times, feel free to always email me and I can respond to any questions through email or we can set up a time together to chat. And thank you so much for um, going through this workshop. Um, if you wouldn't mind just filling out the post-workshop survey um, that is linked in the um, shareable presentation um, just to give feedback about how it went and then if you have any other topics that you would like to um, see as a workshop um, please provide that there and thank you so much again